नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी गुड इवनिंग सर वेलकम टू कार्निक सर गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी या गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग एंड अ ग्रेट इवनिंग टू टुडेस गेस्ट विंग कमांडर चाटी सर यस यस ऑफ कोर्स सो ही इज वन ऑफ दोस हीरोस हु फॉट वैलिएंटली द नो एंड द मेन थिंग बीइंग ही वाज एबल टू मैनेज ऑल हिज फोर कोलीग्स हु एस्केप फ्रॉम द जेल such an interesting story sir would like to listen to you learn from you and get inspired by your great story of great escape particularly so welcome okay. sir welcome i welcome you on your all our air warriors on today's webinar so i have been saying you are the uh, one of the greatest heroes and uh, i think about your story uh, great escape was also film was made it was i think success and those people came and met you and to call the information from you about the how it was done i think you are the one who covered all those things when they left the uh, through the tunnel well, i did my job that's all i would say <laughs> so what it yeah do. it needs lot of you no know, courage secret and all those things yeah i start off with my little limerick which was i said by mr uh, rather uh, late wing commander kamath in the pow camp in rawalpindi sir it was like there was a ghati called chati <laughs> so whether i should speak in marathi or english or hindi you have a choice i think i'll stick to hindi and english yeah that would be fine sir because most of our air warriors are other than marathas are also there <laughs> all right thanks sir so firstly i would like to acknowledge the fact uh, we come at chati sir has been helping us a lot in uh, hyderabad when we met our uh, mbc hero uh, uh, group avm parker sir avm naid garu and and all others also so and also he has been helping us in reaching goc then going for accommodation to be it for officers and other others so i think on behalf of all our air warriors sir so i once again thank your help continuous and consistent help towards the success of our function i am available thank you thank you so much sir yes sir now you can take us through a 50 years back of your journey where i think valiant people like you made it possible to liberate bangladesh from uh, uh, pakistan which was uh, doing all kinds of atrocities against the bengalis and uh, and which also proved the supremacy of our air force against the pakistan during 71 war is a great honor to have other heroes like our wing commander karnik uh, sir we are see and uh, das sir may be joining in due course so in the presence of all you can take us through your journey sir starting from where you were born when you were born how you got how and why you joined air force there onwards and particularly that incident the jail break 71 incident that is the uh, uh, most uh, uh, highlight of your uh, journey you can take us through sir where were you born sir and when were you born okay so i now right through now start off my childhood i was uh, born in uh, rv a place very close to varda which is in the bidarba yes sir and uh, close to nagpur also we were a total of uh, we are seven children in the chatti family and uh, my my dad was a veterinarian okay great and, uh, Uh, my schooling and college was in Padudan High School, New English High School, Nagpur, and uh, Institute of Science. I carried on till about Inter Science. I was in the NCC Air Wing. Oh, that's great! The, the number mm-hmm. two squadron of the NCC Air Wing in Nagpur. Great, sir. Okay. So during this time, I was I had appeared for NDA. I had passed the written test in 27th NDA Air Force Wing side. Sir, but. Unfortunately, I did not stand in the looks like the UPSC merit list because I had cleared my medical also, and then I I did not get a call to join a day. So I was rather disappointed, but okay. I had made up my mind. Thereafter, I appeared for the 96th pilot course, direct entry course, and I went for the interview, and then I cleared it at Bangalore or rather okay. Mysore, and then med- medical at Bangalore. and then in june 1964 i joined 96 pilot corps at coimbatore oh okay sir that was the administrative college of indian air force sir and it's in june so 1964 ground that was the place for ground training for 6 months okay thereafter i went to eftu patiala okay. where we command the larkins that time and uh, now i i think abm thereafter retired as abm 
larkins okay sir wonderful man and uh, we were that was the winter time in patiala very cold this is the first time i was experiencing cold okay <laughs> and uh, from nagpur the hottest place in our country nearly <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, i really enjoyed my stay there and of course that was the first time i'm going to learn flying from a he picked me up as his pupil okay so in uh, pushpak aircraft i went solo in about 7 uh, 8 hours of flying and then did about 25 hours of fly total flying on pushpak there after uh, we got our course got over in 6 months in uh, patiala where i also been command the lakins that time allowed me to go to national institute of sports to play cricket with the, mr wadington as was the coach there and that was a unique experience and myself and uh, my coach mate that time flight cadet bellari who had gone to transport later we did go to that uh, institute almost every day for a few days national institute of sports play cricket there and come back to, to the mess which was about 5 5 to 6 kilometers from patiala going through the cans and all we were quite impressed by that place and that uh, that institute national institute of sports itself was a big huge institute i had did come across some our uh, girl uh, students who were also the national institute of sports candidates and they were uh, practicing other games like whatever volleyball or etc here we stayed for about 6 months and then uh, we were posted to uh, rather move to pilots training establishment alahabad sir this pte which is to be the pilots training establishment we called it a physical torture establishment i don't know why <laughs> it was uh, summer time in alahabad very hot in up and of course uh, we were uh, a large course nearly about 200 to 230 cadets plus there were some previous course mates also who were reflighted there because of whatever the reason be so it was a i mean it's not easy to manage 250 cadets in a mess that what is thereafter the 65 war broke out in pakistan okay okay that was around september time and then the all the instructors had moved out to their squadrons sir and we were all left to the cgi staff okay i remember having do and done cod duties when that's called the cadet on duty that's so like a, okay that was uh, and that time the canberras had moved in from kalai kunda to alahabad okay sir and then they were all parked over the runway okay and we were guarding them with sticks okay. in our shorts and uh, of course it was <laughs> a wild area there likely would have been snakes around and all that but we didn't bother and we carried on guarding those aircraft okay the time they were there a job was to take all the messages coming in and right. uh, if need be go to that particular room and see the if the pilot is required or not okay okay i remember to have woken up then i think squad leader carway and he was a very upset man okay. i think that move to alabat something had happened in kalai kunda which we don't know didn't know about as cadets yes, and uh, well that was it so we carried yes. on doing then the war finished i think yes. and uh, we carry uh, resumed our flying training in the hst2 hindustan trainer 2 okay it was manufactured in bangalore yes. designed by dr gadge okay even now now it is uh, has finished its life now it is no more there in the indian air force but it was the mo- most difficult aircraft a basic trainer in the world i think that's what they call <laughs> call it good so, very unstable and it had a tail wing okay. piston engine and we did about 25 hours there i went solo in about 9 hours and it was sheer a hard work i used to practice in the room with the stick in the right hand <laughs> my uh, i was hand holding the right the left hand as if i am imagining the throttle is in my hand <laughs> all the checks and procedures day and night okay great that is in the court because you had to know the checks and procedures very well because you have to put in a lot of effort because flying was something which was new to me nobody had joined in the air force no neither neither the any experience of the forge somehow i did manage it cleared myself from the final test pilot training establishment and moved to jodhpur that was the howards there uh, we moved into a new brand new accommodation okay. and uh, it started our training 
there after uh, howards it took me some time to get used to the pitch lever and the throttle and different controls right. i think and I, i forget the name of the cfi carrier no issue whatever it was and uh, very sick man and we had to clear our ground test before we commence the flying training checklist okay. Okay. you have to know it backwards and you have to learn it by heart okay. all pre start check post start white flash and before take off engine emergency all we had really worked hard day and night yeah, absolutely I, i think absolutely no scope for error no scope for error unless you score in the emergencies 100 out of 100 you will not come in flying okay and they used to cover it very well very very dedicated staff indeed really okay sir i went solo in about 10 hours or so and uh, i remember squad leader agarwal he was from nagpur i heard and i was also from nagpur <laughs> okay good frequency that was a coincidence or whatever it is a very cool man mustache big mustaches and very polite to talk to and the, the appearance was different and uh, whenever he talked was different okay so uh, pleasing personality after finishing the training in jodhpur we moved to hakimpet hyderabad again for training sir in the final phase of training there were okay. all stages one by started off with coimbatore patiala alabad jodhpur and then final training before we pass out is at hakimpet fighter okay. training okay sir transport chaps went to bangalore or they came to begampet okay and uh, fighters uh, rest of us were all in the in Hakim. the hakimpet mess yes, which sir. was actually not, till now was known as the mess in dongalmari that is a lovely village okay that has been now been demolished and i spoke to air vice marshal vikram petia yesterday okay. and he told me have you gone to the mess <laughs> i have designed it and brought it closer to the town that was his first thing when he was posted here okay. where is the kenesh mess and they again took him to dongalmari so he shifted it told command that he, it has to be moved okay. and it was moved after it was built that is So Our, finally when were you commissioned sir after training we were commissioned in 1966 29 October 1966 okay okay sir and uh, we were posted to pune thereafter in 220 squadron and 221 squadron those two squadrons used to manage the training of the pilots who had passed out as pilot officer okay air chief marshal arjun singh gave us the wings at begum pet oh great now core at begum pet and our yes. course was called the queen mary course <laughs> because <laughs> we used to move from akipet to begum pet being a large course it was a problem for the administration to move so many cadets i don't think that vehicle exist anymore it was a sort of a small carrier and a large a trailer behind it is large trailer yes sir yes sir right. and uh, all very well uh, had very good haircuts and uh, practicing for almost a fortnight in begum pet and the traveling time was anything about an hour or so for the queen mary to go from hakim pet to how many cadets used to go sir by i would say nearly a uh, 100 or so maybe in the whatever is uh, they are saying some people said okay. in begum pet mess who were from the transport wing where at training yeah. in that's a ttw is called transport training wing in begum pet and uh, bangalore people cadets has also okay. joined us so the three training establishments carrying out this plus the helicopters who were in alabad okay so the course was okay. passing out and so oh, was there air force academy at that time sir no no academy no, uh, uh, was there any the, air force academy during that time academy was only in hakim pet and uh, bangalore ttw and ala uh, hyderabad city uh, training and the helicopter training unit in uh, it was in ala i think alabad yes okay sir on 29 october uh, was the passing out parade then and and, and, and you are going to complete 55 years by by this october in this october in this month yes yes october <laughs> what a great journey sir but i remained medically fit and because i used to play exercise play games like cricket football tennis squash badminton all and that that kept me fit enough from here uh, hakimpet after getting our commission we were posted to i was posted to alwara 27 squadron okay people were all moved out to east wing and i was uh, myself along with uh, pradeep late pradeep apte 
and young Seymour who belonged to Abohar. We are three posted to 27 squadron. Pradeep Apte, brother of our Brigadier Avijit Apte, sir. Cousin, cousin. He is the cousin of Brigadier Apte. Yes, sir. And I spoke to him about his, my association with Pradeep Apte. Uh, we were roommates, in fact, in Halwara. Sir. From there, he was posted to HF 24 to 10 squadron. Mm-hmm. Or one of the two, I think, two they were doing the training of HF-24, Hindustan Fighter 24, manufactured in Bangalore at that time. Okay. He did his training and then was posted to Uttarlai or something, or in Jodhpur actually. And then from there, for his office location was in Uttarlai. Okay. And he had a real uh, Hindi movie type of uh, life and he married uh, the one BRD commander's daughter. I think it must be a love marriage. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, love at first sight. He was a handsome man. And she, and so you are a real, you are a really a very handsome man. <laughs> so you are a rem- and, romantic hero. <laughs> of course, actually, in Hindi picture. Achha, great, sir. During the offs, I heard it later after I came back sir. that Pradeep was shot while coming down from the parachute. His aircraft was shot down by the Pakistanis Rangers, and uh, it was a very unfortunate thing. I. Well, very sad about it. Was he your roommate at the point of flying that in the, during operations? When I was in 27th squadron in Halwara, which is close to Ludhiana. Sir. Pradeep was in Uttarlai, I think. Or oh, okay. Okay. Lesel Mayor of Uttarlai, one of these places where he was shot in number two. He was the number two. Okay. Coming to now my escape story. Uh, the no, before that, before escape story, sir, what was the date on which you went on for attack and how you were okay. shot down? Okay. Third evening, myself and late Tyagi, he was, we used to call him Portly because all the Tyagis were bundled. Achha. They were all called bundle Tyagis. Okay. <laughs> but the first bundle Tyagi was the flight commander of 27 Squadron. The second was a big, huge, big moustache. He was in the, later on in the, I think, the Dasi team. And the third was uh, Portly. Yes, sir. Sudhir Tyagi, that is. Okay. So, we were playing squash at uh, Patan Court, the uh, squash court. Yeah, okay. I finished the game and we came out. And the uh, uh, we heard some noise, funny noise. Okay. Some firing is going on or something. And right. we came and we saw, I saw two sabers on top in close formation. Uh, for initially, it took me some time to recognize the aircraft. But they were in a very gentle formation waggling their wings, trying, the number two was trying to maintain the position around about, say, maybe 25, 30 yards. And they dropped their bombs and pushed off towards the south and over the right over the Pathan Court officer's mess and okay. ran away. And then okay. thereafter, the waves of formation were coming. The ACAC had also opened up. We knew that the, it, the balloon has gone up. Thereafter, I went to uh, we went to the room, changed our uniform, the siren had gone and we all reported to the squadron. Okay. And uh, we knew that uh, now the war is on. Next day morning, we are called for the briefing. The night we had, sorry, we did, uh, night we I had to spend, we were dispersed and I was uh, myself with, I think it was Bamboot who was with me, the flying officer Bamboot uh, that time, who is now in Sainikpuri. Yes, sir. And me and uh, we went to squadron leader Jane's late squad leader Jane's house. Uh, his family was there and we were also there. We spent the night there. Early morning we got up, went to yes. our room, changed. I wore my uh, uh, trouser, which was a woolen trouser to protect me from, in case of ejection, you got to protect yourself. So, yes. wore the woolen clothes inside, yes. black trouser, woolen. And then uh, over that, I was wearing my G-suit. Okay. Went for the briefing. And uh, med briefing, that is. Okay. It was in a hall and this ABM Parker that time and uh, RCO, we all were there sitting over there with along with the station commander, group captain Dandeka. Okay. And the, the briefing was over and he got up and addressed us. Gentlemen, the time has come. Okay. It's war. Maintain RT silence and all, be- all the best. Okay. That was all he did. And we all pushed off to the our units. We were all uh, walking down in the corridors of the... And Thereafter, uh, I yes, shouted sir. my name, Chati. And then I said, okay, I'm here, sir. And we, we are going. What were you, sir? Were you a flight lieutenant that time? I was a flying officer then. Yeah. I had appeared for, I think, I had appeared for the C test, promotion C exam. 
No, sorry, B, I think. Yeah, Dao. We went to the sign to went to sign the form 700. Okay. In the meantime, 20 sudden had started coming back and the ACAC opened up. And okay. there was an umbrella of, and it's difficult to control at that time because uh, men were there, there, but all took naturally, they had to protect themselves. Sir. They went and jumped into various trenches or whatever the thing was practiced in our ground defense exercise. So we took the Form 700 and signed it ourselves and uh, went to the aircraft. Okay. Then the, slowly, uh, the ACAC stopped firing because of whatever the action they taken by the commander. Sir. And uh, did my checks and I entered the cockpit, started up the aircraft. What is the type of aircraft, sir? Hunter 56A. Okay, Hunter's. It is a four tanker hunter with uh, 230 gallons each in the each wing. Mm -hmm. That is total capacity of nearly 8,100 pounds of fuel. A long sir. ranger. So what was the mission, sir? Air to air, air to ground? We had to go to Miyawali. No, no. What was the mission, sir? To support, to give army support? No, no, we had to the introduction mission and going to Miyawali okay. for airfield strike. Okay, sir. Right. Miyawali is an airfield in Pakistan okay. across the uh, Indus River. Okay, sir. What was the formation? Sir? How many how many aircraft were there? The two only. We are supposed to be two only. Okay. Two aircraft formation. Okay, sir. In the meantime, after starting up, I taxied out and uh, awaited the call and went to the extreme left edge of the ORP of okay. Namel 01. Okay, sir. Because I was not able to hear. Okay. I waited there. Other I saw following me other aircraft and uh, they were taking off at about I think. Two or three pairs had gone. Okay. And then I uh, kept waiting for, uh, for the dealer to come. I was thinking duck and I was worried. What, what am I going to do here now? I did have, and I had heard the station commander said, maintain article, very good. I said, I said, let's go, we'll see what it is. Then I saw Vishwamitra Sondi, Scotney David Vishwamitra Sondi, coming to the airfield, and following him was. Pondered a chain, a craft, and then he lined up. I followed him and lined up on the right lane. He, leader had parked in the left lane. Lined were, up you in, rather. were you in the second position, sir? On the right lane and the left. The runway has center line. He okay. just had left and right, two lines, uh, two okay. lanes, okay. they are called. I could hear the his aircraft opening up the power and all, so I also followed. And on the three-second takeoff, it was a standard practice. Okay. And uh, he rolled. After three seconds, I rolled. Thereafter, I was I had clocked about plus about 120 knots. I saw a gnat getting airborne. Okay. Right opposite my leader. And he was on the above the cockpit of the leader. I knew there is a problem. Okay. His number two will be in the my lane. So I started drift, kicking the rudder and moving into the center and getting into his lane. Okay. And then there was no time actually. There hardly any seconds. In fact, two maybe two or three seconds. And the on the right wing tip, I saw the number two no, aircraft that getting airborne. Okay. So my anticipation was right that I had moved and I avoided that collision. Oh, that's and great, sir! Really all great. All the four aircraft had got airborne. It's a miracle. Oh, that's to great! Honest, really great. Great, <laughs> great, sir. Great. Thereafter, we headed towards Madhopur. From Madhapur, we headed towards our other point of where we had to set course for. From there, we are heading towards the IP. Okay. A very pretty terrain en route. En route, once I saw one hunter going below me. Okay. And close to Udhampur, that there was a little gorge where the road go gets in, in mm -hmm. Udhampur Valley. Okay. And uh, a helicopter coming out of it. I, I, I think it was a Mi-4. Okay. We carried on then I, uh, on, uh, further to our mission, but okay. uh, there was no RT at all. I say, okay. About, okay. say, 600 to 800 yards. Who was your leader, sir? Our leader, M.K. Jain. Jain, no yes, sir. Yeah, he died okay. for, on the later mission. Okay. He was shut okay. up. Okay. Closing on to IP, I waggled my wings. There IP no means, RT, sir? There is no initial point of setting course towards the pull-up point. Okay, okay. That was one small station, I think a railway station, just enough to locate and turn left for a left attack pattern on Miyawali. Miyawali, okay. But just before that, there's no point. We have just escaped a head-on takeoff. There's no point taking an RT without RT aircraft. And then the leader I saw turning left and back to the base. 
Okay. So that where we called off our mission and headed back to Patanko. Yes, in sir. The same route, reverse route, that is one eighty degrees. Okay. Uh, he went in for a landing, and then I went and followed the RT failure drill and went and landed the aircraft. I was shown the green light on the finals. It was on fourth, sir, fourth December. It was fourth morning. Morning, yes, sir. We landed, handed over the aircraft. Thereafter, the leader told me, "Now next sortie in the evening, sir. we plan a direct." Route to so we plan your strike again. Uh, that was in the evening around I think about uh, I don't exactly remember time, but around winter timing around five fifteen or something. We are supposed to go back to Miyawali for a strike. Okay. I plan that strike again. The okay. direct route avoiding the IP. Okay. We cross Jhelum railway station and the in the evening. Same formation, sir. With the same squadron. formation. Okay. Same my, myself and uh, coordinator. Call it Jane. On the first day, fourth in the evening. Yes, sir. I forgot to mention here about before taking off for this mission. I had heard about uh, when I was planning the strike. I heard that Wing Commander uh, Parker's aircraft is hit. So we all jumped out of the squadron, and I went out towards the runway. And uh, literally, it was a, a scene where I could see an aircraft had stopped, and the hydraulic fluid was leaking out of it. The fuel was leaking out of it. And he had immediately switched off the aircraft and coolly jumped out of the aircraft because there was no ladder at that time. So he jumped out and walked out of the aircraft. He okay. pushed the aircraft out of the runway, and his number two was also shut up. He had done a wonderful job. His name was Chani Dhillan. Okay. And he had done a dead sick landing at Madhopur Bridge. He had flamed out. Yeah. And uh, he pulled up. Okay. And did a. Beautiful dead sick landing over Patan Kot. Okay, great. A great job. I think that okay. After I went to the for the second mission, sir. took off from Patan Kot and heading again to Madhapur and uh, head, head back to our uh, place of setting course to IP uh, Miyawali. Yes, sir. And before that, we crossed uh, on the hills all over. We could see some dam and all that. It must be one of those dams which is Pakistan has built. I think. Yeah. And we cross the railway line coming from uh, Lahore to going up north uh, towards Rawalpindi. Okay. At that place, uh, the name of the railway station was Jhelum. Mm-hmm. The ACAC opened on us, but we were oh. low. Okay. And uh, after crossing the railway line, I cleared my guns. You know, you're supposed to when you enter the uh, enemy territory, you're supposed to shoot so that you can clear the guns. Okay. They did operate. I mm-hmm. tried to aim at a bus which are going. From uh, on a on a very uh, track or something like that, I saw it okay, okay. and I joined back again. All this while, then uh, we are heading towards. Uh, it was a long. Uh, I, I think uh, Miyawali was about nearly 150 to 200 kilometers. I don't exactly remember now, but that inside the in Pakistani territory. I went to about I think uh, about uh, 20 to 25 minutes of uh, low level flying to Miyawali. At some time. Close to IP, I uh, mean, say pull-up point. He called up target 12 o'clock, and I could see an one attack just firing from that area. Just okay. one for one attack, and he called up. Okay. Going into attack, he called up, and he went into into an attack. I saw him going in, attack, and pulled out of the dive. And okay, I was behind him. In the meantime, I saw I turned a little left and tried to put in an attack. Went into the attack and fired. There was a transport aircraft. It was a black aircraft. Okay. okay. As I looked up after the attack, my leader was not there. Oh. So I carried on on the course after the attack on a three six zero for about I think maybe thirty seconds, and I had not seen my tail clear at that time. Okay. Some time more, and I saw my. I mean, I felt that I have been hit. The controls had frozen, and the aircraft was pitching up. Okay. On its own, I had no control over the aircraft. It controls had become very hard. Okay. Aircraft pitched up, and I called out, "I am hit, ejecting." Okay. That was after some time after the pull out. Oh, that's okay, sir. My God. Hmm. And then I went and ejected and landed up on a slope of a hill. Yes, sir. I had, I had some pain in the back, so I kept lying there only. Okay. And then the people gathered around me.